Hey, good morning guys. Tush coming at you. Sunday, April the 2nd. And there's a car trailer in my driveway. And a bunch of wood on top of it. wonder what that's for. Out in the sunshine. It's been stored away for, I don't know, three years? It's a little dusty. And there she is, the next project. We'll have a little chat when we get back to the house. Alright. 68 Triumph TR250. Alright guys, I guess the cat's out of the bag. Here's my new summer project. This is my 1968 Triumph TR250 that I've owned since uh, March 2011 so I've had it a few years and uh, really not done anything to it it's more or less been in storage it did need some work uh, or does need some work so uh, we're just about to get ready uh, to get started on that and uh, I'll go into the reasons why Alright guys, I'm going to have to do this uh, next few parts in little bits and pieces um, to tell you why I've decided to go ahead and restore this car at this point. Uh, as you know, I probably don't like to have uh, two restorations or multiple restorations going on at the same time and I prefer to get one car done before moving on to the next. But in this case, uh, this is going to be an exception to the rule. Um, we are going to get started on this car probably tomorrow and uh, I'll go into the reasoning behind that. All right, what are my reasons for wanting to get into this restoration? Well, it's kind of a bit of a perfect storm actually, and I'll go through uh, a few of the things that made me decide that I wanted to go ahead with this car. The first being that uh, this car was originally manufactured or was be uh, began to be manufactured in uh, August of 1967 was the uh, first production dates for these cars. This, in, this car in particular was uh, manufactured around May the 6th 1968 um, but this year they're considering this car uh, since it was started to be produced in 1967 this car is being considered as a 50th anniversary car at a number of the shows that I'm uh, attending or I normally attend uh, during the course of the year so this will be a featured mark on the show fields this year uh, for 50th anniversary so as it is the uh, 50th anniversary car, I thought that I uh, might attempt to try to get this car done in order to attend one show at least, and that would be British Car Day, and that's in September 17th, 2017. I've got the web page up here. So British Car Day is here. If you've never been to British Car Day, it's a fantastic show. Hopefully you can see that. There's not too much glare on it. Maybe I'll just tip that a little bit. As you can say, see, uh, British Car Day has a countdown calendar. They have 168 days until British Car Day, September 17th, 2017. So I thought it would be kind of cool, and again, as I mentioned, this will be a featured mark at British Car Day this year, and I thought it might be cool to attempt to try to get this car there and on the field on that day. All right, the second reason I want to get this car done is that not only does this car celebrate a 50th anniversary, I'm actually celebrating a 50th birthday within the next, uh, let's say, two months. So uh, it's a big milestone for me. Uh, so I thought, what the heck, 50th anniversary of the car, my 50th birthday, it's kind of like a perfect storm. And we'll try to attempt to get this car restored to celebrate uh, both of those occasions. The third thing that sort of came together to get me convinced to start this restoration is that I managed to pick up a lot of TR250 parts within the last little while. I'm not sure if you recall TR250 Sean from Queensville. If you look back at my previous videos, uh, Sean and I had gone together and looked and purchased a car for him, uh, 250 and a Spitfire. Actually, he's featured in a few of my videos. Well, um, Sean's had a bit of a life change let's say and uh, has decided to or has sold his 250 and his Spitfire so 
Um, Sean had already started stockpiling parts and here are the floor pans and those are the inner sills and outer sills um, and some bulkhead panels down there. So Sean had stockpiled quite a few parts to start his project and in the end, like I just mentioned, he uh, decided he wasn't going to proceed with that so the car is sold um, but the parts sort of stayed behind. So Sean and I struck a deal for me to purchase those parts in order for me to complete uh, this restoration. So I've got a number of parts on hand that will help me in the restoration of this car. That includes a frame. This car is in probably bad need of a frame. I won't really need know uh, how bad it is until I get the body off the frame. But I know it's had a lot of work done on it in the past. I do have a stack of receipts from this car from the previous owner and it did have a lot of work done on the frame. A lot of very expensive work actually when I look at the uh, invoices. Anyway, it does have a new chassis uh, that I'll be picking up from Sean at the end of uh, April. So hopefully we'll uh, have that in time that we'll, you know, we'll have the car disassembled and re ready to start re redoing the, uh, the chassis build up for this car. So that's one of the other reasons I decided to go ahead with this restoration. So as mentioned, what I've decided to do is uh, I've decided to use this countdown clock as my guideline to do this restoration. However, I've worked on uh, deadlines before and I don't particularly like working to a deadline. It sort of takes the fun out of the project. So I'm not going to be too upset if I miss that deadline. That's more of a, let's say it's more of a target than a deadline uh, for this car to be done. So um, there may be uh, some bumps in the way uh, along the way as far as my work schedule is concerned. I know I have some uh, potential job actions happening at some of our uh, facilities that uh, may take me away from this project for an extended period of time. I know I have a few business trips planned along the way. So it's going to come down to really how much time I'm able to actually spend on this car over the next uh, 168 days. So it may come to fruition and it may not and I won't be upset if it doesn't but I'm going to take it as a personal challenge to try and get this car done. I'm not going to make any shortcuts on it along the way. I'm still going to do everything as I've done on every car that I've worked on and uh, however there may be a few things for example that uh, may go back on the car let's say the bumpers for example the bumpers are not great on this car and probably need to be rechromed at some point if I get into a time crunch uh, there's no reason why I can't actually put these bumpers back on the car and then at some point later on remove them and have them rechromed so you may see some parts that are less than show quality, let's say, or more driver quality that go back on this car. I'm not going for a concourse style restoration. I'm going for a driver quality or good driver quality restoration. Um, so you may see some things that, uh, you know, go back on the car that I might not necessarily do if I was doing a, you know, a very long term restoration and I could actually wait for parts. So having said that, there are some upgrades that uh, I really wanted to do to this car. One being uh, possibly swapping out the old differential for a more modern uh, Nissan R200 differential along with some CV axles. So that will probably or most not likely get done uh, during this part of the restoration. But again, that's something that can go back and upgrade as we see fit somewhere down the line. This is more getting it back to a, uh, a driving or on the car or on the road car and uh, you know one that I can be uh, happy taking to shows and to you know around on local drives around here as well. So that's the objective of this car is just to get it back on the road first and we'll worry about doing some upgrades later. There are some essential upgrades that I'm going to do along the way. Um, I feel that it's important to pay attention to the rear hubs on these cars so I'll probably end up upgrading the rear hubs with some more modern hubs. Um, those are kind of essential upgrades and I'll do those uh, when I actually do the restoration of this car. So I just wanted to give you a quick uh, update on what is actually going to be involved in this restoration. As mentioned, this will be a frame off restoration and pretty much every component of this car will be gone through. That includes both a rebuild of the engine um, and a rebuild of the transmission. This does have an overdrive transmission in there. Uh, the transmission itself will get rebuilt. I'm not sure about the overdrive. A lot of this, again, is going to have to wait until we actually have a physical look at it. I know the engine is tired. It does smoke quite a bit. It does have a lot of performance mods to it, including those triple Webers. It does have an S2 cam and a header. Um, it's balanced and blueprinted, so uh, it's had quite a bit of work done on it in the past, but it is old and tired, so we'll be taking that apart. 
I've already given uh, Elon a heads up that I'm going to need his help probably, uh, you know, with some of his uh, his tools to measure, you know, bores and, you know, that kind of stuff. I need his uh, big, uh, beautiful brain to uh, help me do the math on all of the uh, cam timing. So we'll invite Elon up to the garage at some point and he can tinker around on this engine once we get it uh, to that point. So. Thanks, Elon, for volunteering to help me with the, this project. I'll probably call in some other people that are, are experts uh, from our local club. We do have a Weber expert. We do have a couple guys that are uh, pretty knowledgeable in uh, rebuilding transmissions. I've not rebuilt a transmission before. I know there's lots of good information on the Internet, some videos, uh, lots of books and guides and technical bulletins to refer to. So. I'm fairly confident we can do that. Uh, not so much so confident on the overdrive uh, part of the transmission, but uh, we'll figure it out. So uh, as far as body is concerned, the fiberglass fenders are going to be a problem. I've got some metal fenders over here. Uh, they're holy fenders as you can see. Uh, so they need lots of work, but they are original fenders. Um, you can actually see the, uh, the stripe on this one over here. I am going to go back to the stripe. This one doesn't have the stripe on it that it should have on the bonnet, so we'll rectify that for sure. So the first part of this restoration will be to get this car up on uh, jack stands in the uh, middle of the garage in a fashion that makes sense that we can get to all sides of it and we're going to start stripping it and getting it down to a bare tub uh, as quickly as possible. So as mentioned, we'll probably start that process tomorrow. Uh, today is March or sorry, April the 2nd. So we'll probably start this restoration on April the 3rd. And again, what I'll do as far as the titling of these videos is I'm going to use the countdown clock as the T minus. Uh, so tomorrow will be T minus, what, 167 days to uh, British Car Day. Uh, so we will uh, label our videos accordingly so you can follow them in order. That's the plan anyway. We did stop and get our Ziploc bags all... Uh, refreshed up there and ready to go. We got the Sharpies all ready to go. We got our journal all ready to go. So uh, we'll get to it tomorrow. All right, so stay tuned guys. Hope you'll enjoy this project and if you are watching my channel to watch my TR3 videos, hope you don't mind that I've switched to the 250. Anyway, we'll see this one come back to life hopefully by September. That's it for now guys.